I got a nice set of buds on the way too. Did you? Yeah, for work. Let's go. With with a mic in it too. So maybe for the the patrons, you know, might have some daily. Some... I love that. I love the. I love this theme. Maybe like a yeah a daily check in. Like see what the yeah, shitheads are up to. You know. A little Pull shithead lunch break. Savage Dude. lunch. Savage lunch time. Ooh, that could be spicy. Might have to get like a uh, cafeteria going. You know, like literally like yeah. at school again. Hopefully the uh, the guy I'm with doesn't decide he wants to leave. <laughs> <laughs> why what what's going on with that ah, he's just he he was there by himself for like four or five months like they refused to get him help it's when it's busy it's like it's overwhelming there's some slower days too but uh he just kind of feels like he's at his wits end with the place and i'm like oh, don't fucking leave me buddy <laughs> don't don't leave me to make me that guy now I, i'm the one that's fucking out here just <laughs> getting swarmed i'm not ready to be a full-time content creator <laughs> too young for this i'll tell you one thing buddy definitely definitely rethink life choices when you start going down that path i'm i'm living yeah. i'm living proof of that so what, what are we talking about in this one man what's a great brain it's a great up? question I, 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 Forty chest, yeah. Forty chest, huh? Forty chest, let's get it. Yo, is that T Dog? Forty chest, huh? Forty chest, hey, hey. Forty chest, this a trade show. Patreon where the trades go, tapping and watch. That's what you came for. Ain't gotta say my name, they know my name, bro. What's good, man? We got McNutted in ATM. Always start off the show with a trade from them. You should always make sure that your trade is in. Patreon, why not be a Patreon? Know you wish you could spend every day with them. Tap in and say what you gonna say with them. Stop home, make a fill up a stadium. Next time you log in, make sure that you bring a friend. We about to kick off, let the day begin. Go follow the socials. 40 Chess FF is posted. If your trade is an F, you get roasted Go like and subscribe for the crew Apple, Spotify, and the YouTube You know Cooper got the wall too Let us give you a walkthrough Forty Chess This is Forty Chess Let's, let's do a let's do a live exercise because this has been in my mind for a while. How about this? I have something. Uh, if you don't, if you don't like it, but go ahead. Let's hear it. I seen it again. Our my buddy, the show's buddy, Tom. Fantasy points, dynasty points. But we're very on opposite ends of the spectrum about quarterbacks and superflex. He don't give a fuck about them. <laughs> what up, <laughs> Thomas? I saw you put out the the Justin Fields trade. That's why there's no security in quarterbacks, and I, I disagree with it. I think there is some inherent security with. So let's really find out. Like, let's look at quarterbacks over the last few years. Okay. Go back like what do you say, 18 2018 on? Keep yeah. it recent ish. I want to know how they did fantasy points wise and how many years they were starting. Right? Okay, what the inherent security is. So, are you talking rookie quarterbacks coming into the league? Yep. Okay, all right, that's what that, that's a good clarification. Because, I mean, even if you think about it, uh, like what, what's the security on a first round wide receiver? Maybe we'll dive into those two, we'll go through the first rounders. And I know the hit rate's not as good, but I'm also interested to see like how many games they actually played that were meaningful, <clears> you know, like now, when they got relegated to just fuck off territory get out of here i think using the 2018 just uh I'm, I'm pulling them all up here but the 2018 i know offhand pretty well because you know it was one of those the browns first overall pick um year so it's pretty pretty top of mind so it'll be interesting to see too uh like i think one of the themes is going to be also like what type of tolerance you have and baker's a, a living proof of that let's one. do let's do 10 years last decade right 2015 Ooh. class onward damn now now we're talking now we're talking getting up there let's do it get a okay. nice mix all right so 2015 the 101 in the nfl was Jameis winston do you know how many years for tampa bay before they said was it five uh, i'm looking them up right now i don't know right offhand uh 2015 16 17 8 and then 2019 was his infamous 30 for 30 yeah so he it was five i, I remember uh he got that fifth year it felt like right 20 yeah fantasy yeah fantasy points wise uh 18 points per game as a rookie 17 16 19 and 20 21 i'll round up the crazy part about winston's career though that that's why i, I like kind of vividly remember the five years is because <clears throat> imagine being that good in fantasy and then next year you don't have a you don't have a home like that one is well that happens when you throw, throw 30, 30 picks <laughs> yeah <laughs> Even Josh Allen, right? Josh Allen starts stringing together thirty fucking pick years, like they're gonna get rid of his ass. It, <laughs> like if you combine, this, if you combine any of his two years prior, um, you, you'd have to go to his rookie and sophomore year to get to 
30 picks in any two seasons. I would say there's uh, some nice security right now, right off the bat, just off of uh, the 101 in the NFL, huh? What about the 102 in that class was mm-hmm. Mariota? Mariota, yeah, he, he, he it felt like he played maybe a year shorter. I'm uh, pulling up Mr. Marcus right now because he did end up getting benched for uh, Ryan Tannehill, right? Mm-hmm. Eventually. Uh, 2015, 2016, 2017. <laughs> he got pulled in the fifth. He got pulled in his fifth year. 2018, he was uh, so four years full on, and then he went to his fifth year with a starting. Yeah, he went into the fifth year starting. So they both had their fifth year option picked up, right? And then they uh, both flamed out and didn't get a contract. Fantasy points wise, he was uh, 18, 18, 15, and 13. So he trailed off there at the end. But first two years, you were pretty happy, right? 18 points per game guy. Oh, that was points per game. I thought you said uh, like quarterback finish. Gotcha. Yep. No, uh, 17, 12, 18, and was uh, the finish. Yep. When, when you had that uh, top 12 season, you probably were hoping, all right, maybe we're starting to cook here. He, I think Now we're cooking with gas. If you, Yeah, there you go. I think it was, was it his sophomore year? He had like over 20 touchdowns. Uh, was yep. his, bet, his best season. 26 passing touchdowns, 350 yards on the ground, threw for 3,400 yards. But then really, uh, holy crap, man. He regressed like crazy. 13 touchdowns. 11 touchdowns the following two seasons that's that's actually pretty wild so off the first ones we're looking at the oldest ones nice four or five year average for one and two pick All right. yeah split the difference uh, call it four and a half right what about uh jared goff jared goff one I mean, of the next class take take a look i think i think that's what go i'm saying it. when you when you go back mike it's also um like knowing for a lot of these guys there's gonna be a dip window Right, like uh, Jared Goff had a huge, huge dip window. Basically, it was like the large majority of dynasty gamers were probably trying to sell him off for about a year. Uh, so starting for the Rams, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 2020, and then 2021 shipped off. So but he he, five years under. His but he started. Every, didn't he start every single year? So he's yep. been a starter now. What seven? Um, his rookie year though, he only played in seven games. Oh, that was the uh, right. Fisher, Jeff Fisher, the last yeah, year, man. Jeff Fisher. Yeah. Oh gosh, yeah, I do remember so, that. So fantasy points per game, eight point six. Uh, then McVay came to town, seventeen and a half, nineteen, sixteen and a half, sixteen point nine, and then with the first year with the uh, the old Detroit Lions, fourteen and a half. I mean, uh, twenty eighteen, right? Remember that was the year. Uh, I don't think he won. He was in MVP. He was in MVP discussions, right? Like fifty point. The, the team scored Chief, fifty point. The Chiefs. Yeah, the Chiefs it was supposed to be in Mexico City, and then they moved it back because the field was all jacked back. up. Twenty points per game. His third year in the league. Not too bad for him. Um, how about the uh, number two pick, Mister Carson Wentz? Ah, <laughs> uh, the cra- the crazy part is of all the na- the guys you mentioned, Carson Wentz looked like the most promising start of all. Right, he was a uh, should have won the MVP. I mean, definitely, definitely in the s- similar to golf, but definitely in the conversation. Um, if he stays healthy that whole year, right? Uh, game started. All right, so for Philly. All five years, he started at least 12 games and then went to the Colts, right? Started the whole season, Rams this past year. Yeah, the the, the Colts was basically, in my estimation, that was really the telltale sign. Like, he, he still was uh, showing, fl- like, flashes of decent games, but, man, it was like when you saw the bad play, you're like, Carson, what in the world is going on What are you here? doing? Right. Uh, so, fantasy points, 13-9, 21.6. That was the, uh, the that MVP. Was, year. was that the 17 year? Yeah. Super Bowl year. Uh, came back after that ACL, 18 points per game 17.4 17.8 and 15.6 and he gave you how, how many years as a full-time starter then would that have been seven so we got a we had a four is the leader in the clubhouse for least and we're up to jared goff with whatever he's going into now there were, and there was no later round first round picks in those classes right uh there was in this one okay oh this class we have it okay this is 20 Fine. 2016 class we do have one and this one's gonna be abysmal. I this imagine. Is where, like people, people will be like, "See, I told Paxton Lynch, Adam." Oh gosh. I, honestly, my guy forgot he was a first round pick. Holy crap. Yeah, twenty sixth overall to the Broncos. I do think though that's a distinguishing thing to probably put in to, to play here is you get you get like late first round draft capital. It's a lot different. Definitely count him in. So you got a late one, and uh, he started a grand total of four games over his two year career. R.I.P. Not good. He, he's he's a, he's a nice uh, he's a nice shake up to the data here. You know. <laughs> there's your there's your outlier in the clubhouse right now. Not even gonna look up his fantasy points. You only start fucking four games. Obviously, they hated you. Yeah, we, we, you might as well just put you as a uh, a red X. Like, didn't matter what you did in those four games. 2017 will be really fun to add to the mix here. <laughs> we'll move on to 2017. First quarterback off the board, Mitch Trubisky. <laughs> See what he did. Interested to see his games played too. You know what he did. He actually, though, when you look at his um, 
points per game for a few years. It was solid. It was not great, but... So he started three years of double-digit games for Chicago. 18 and 19. 2020, he only started nine. And then moved on to Buffalo. So that was, it was over. So he only played three starting years and then was benched midway through his He went into his fourth year as a starter. Um, Player profiler for going down at the perfect time. Did he get benched or did he get hurt? I think he got benched, didn't he? Because he came back and played. He started uh, week 12 through 17. I'm trying to remember it. I tell you the Who's truth, I don't know. Good one for the shit show. It's a reminder to go to. I okay, so yeah, he he, he suffered a shoulder. He suffered a shoulder injury. So he went down for a few games. Well, actually, back. wait a second now. This is during week 11. That can't be the right year because I'm looking at 2017. Oh, that's 2020. I'm sorry. I typed in 20. Take all that back. I had the wrong year to type in. 2020. Uh, started nine games. Appeared. In- he only missed two games with an injury. So did, was was he benched and then the other guy got hurt? <laughs> Then they just said, fuck it, we're tanking for junk, or we don't have anybody to go to. Player profiler is not cooperating with me right now. No, so I'm looking at the... Uh... I just had to yell at it. Fantasy point finishes at him. Uh, 11. 19? Mitch had a 19er? That's what I was saying. He actually was decent in production. Was that his uh, 2019 or 18 season? This is a sophomore year. 18, yep. Think about that, too. CJ Stroud just <laughs> put up 18 fantasy <clears throat> points in the game. And where he's at right now, mm-hmm. Mitch Trubisky did it his sophomore year. Think about, like, how we valued that fucking... Now, we made fun of him. I mean, Mitch, there was always, like, I remember even every time he played and had good games, there were so many uh, red flags and concerns by a lot of people. Right. But, Mike, I will say the one game there uh, versus Tampa, I don't know if people are remembering this game. I... I I do. Dude had six passing touchdowns and 354 yards. That basically oh, shit. Dro- yeah, drove a lot of that season. That's a trivia fact I would never get. Six Mitch passing Trubisky's touchdowns. High of yeah. passing touchdowns at a game. I would never in a million years. One away from the NFL record, dude. Which is uh, tied with uh, another guy you would never expect who had seven. I mean, yeah, there's. I think there's a decent amount of guys at seven now. One pretty recent. Yeah, who is it? Uh, was Nick? Was it Big Dick Nick? Yeah, Big that's, Dick what Nick. that's what I thought. <laughs> he had yeah, seven. Yeah, yeah, you had to give me a second now. I got gotcha. you. So 19, uh, 14, <clears throat> 16, 11, and then in 2018. Oh, their shit's all fucked up. We got doubles. <laughs> oh, all you're right. reading wrong. 11, 19, 14, and 16. One of the things I do remember, too, was he had, uh, I guess you want to call it sneaky athletic. Like, he, he had, in those first two years, a decent amount of rushing stats. Uh, so his first games. year, he went for 248. His second year, his best one in the league, he went for 421 and three on the ground. Three touchdowns on the ground. Yeah. And that, that year in particular, Mike, you're looking at 7, 5, 8. These are carries, by the way. 7, 5, 8, 6, 6. Six, ten, six, five. Like he had a lot of, um, like almost drawn up run plays. Do I even need to bother to look up Patrick Mahomes? I mean, you just you, whatever it is to now, you just add it all, right? Yep. That's why I said seventeen is gonna be fun. And then even add in Watson's craziness. Third career of Deshaun. Third pick of that draft was Deshaun Watson. But I'm saying add in all the craziness of you know how many years did he not play because of off the field drama? Right. Oh, let's. Uh... I'm actually interested to see what Watson was at for actual games played. Mike, he was... But the thing about Watson that people are going to forget is that he was in very real quarterback two conversation. Right. So his rookie year, he only played six games. 18, 19, and 20, he played 16, 15, and 16. You don't remember Ryan Mallett? And then the the last two years with Cleveland, six games. A lot of injuries, yep. Didn't play at all in the 21 season. 22 start, (laughs) and then injured this past season. I'm I'm interested to see where his points per game was, actually. we know It uh, It was really good. We know old Patrick Mahomes. Uh, Deshaun Watson. All right, Adam. Rookie year, twenty four point seven. That was in uh, a small sample size, right? The six games. S- seven games played, six started. Yeah, twenty one point three, twenty two, and twenty three point five. So those were good for QB five, QB two, and QB five finishes. <clears throat> You know, what's, you know what's interesting, though, thinking about this, right? 2017, hurt, out for the rest of the season. He's had a lot of shortened seasons, man. Uh, he's 50%. <laughs> Either he plays a half a season or he plays a full season. That is. I guess technically, if you want to count 21, he's sub 50%, right? That's what I was going to say. When you play when you, any of that season. When you throw off the field, it's like, man, uh, availability, big concern. Okay. But, yeah, I got gotcha. you. Uh, how about old Baker? Baker Reagan. Yeah, 2018. Let's get to the uh, where we're going to start. Ba- Baker, Mike, is uh, the Jared Goff trajectory, I guess? Uh, for Cleveland starting years double digit games 18 19 20 and 21 and then technically in 2022 he hit double digit games started as well but that's when he got traded yeah got shipped then you got Sammy Darnold right 
that's split between Carolina and the, the Rams. How about fantasy points? I don't think this was very good, was it? Oh, you're talking Baker? Uh, he had yeah. one good season at fantasy points. He was a little, uh, very much more mid. Uh, rookie year, 18 points. People were really, really high after his rookie season. 15, 16, and then 22, he was only at 10. 22 was Mike when the uh, the guy was basically should have never been playing after that hit with the Texans. Like, why are we throwing him out here? So he got, uh, he got four years under his original deal. Didn't end up getting the fifth year picked up. So we've only had one guy, Paxton Lynch, so far, who didn't fire ever. Now, we're getting ready to change that pretty quick here. What about Sammy Darnold next yeah. pick in that draft? That's the guy we're getting ready to change it with. Uh, As far as his full four years, right? Uh, With the Jets, uh, double-digit games his first three years, 18, 19, and 20. His fourth year he did Carolina. not trade it, right? Yep. Got traded to Carolina, started 11 games. For that was in which season, 21? And he had the uh, he had the hot start. Remember, he uh, the first four weeks was coming out blazing. Fantasy points per game: fourteen, fifteen, twelve, and then fourteen. So pretty pretty rough. Then you'll add Josh Allen to the mix. We know he's good. And don't forget about a very late gem uh, before you get a. You're gonna get the outliers of outliers. We're gonna look up uh, Josh Rosen here. One year, I can already tell you, but yeah, 13 games his rookie year, and then never really heard of again. Don't forget the last one. Oh, don't worry, I'm getting there. I gotta look up how bad Josh Rosen was. His he's he's QB 35 in points per game. 8. No, he was nine points. The reason he never got much of an extra shot was it was like I, it, we don't. They're like we don't care how bad the situation was. We know it was bad. But you showed us nothing. We know how awesome he is. Pick took over, took over for Joe Flacco, and the rest was history. Pick 32. So we're 50-50 on late-round uh, first-round quarterback. Pass yeah. Lynch stunk. Lamar <clears throat> Jackson tore it up. Yeah, Lamar, Lamar's going to end up being one of the, uh, again, outlier of outliers. He's, uh, holy hell, what a, what, a, what a career he's had in fantasy, man. Let's go All to right, Kyler Murray that. next year. Yeah, we, we know he's really good, still playing. Well, but he, the value dip was pretty real, though, for a little bit. Off this injury. Yeah, but he was still a 15th Fi- quarterback. Yeah, he was like a fifth, year, he was so. like a fifth, sixth-round pick, though. Yeah. Yeah, it's about, yeah probably about 15 issue to your point right, right. high end qb2 even in dynasty value which was dumb for people to do but <laughs> you, you know who was going ahead of kyler murray in drafts though last year mike daniel jones Danny Danny Dimes, Jones. baby. I got, I got a nice share of him on one of my teams, just QB3, like, woof. So, obviously, still with the Giants, yep. heading into his sixth year as a starting quarterback. Remains to be seen, right? But we can give him five solid ones. Earned a second contract, too. Sixth overall pick. What about fantasy points? How bad was Daniel Jones at times? Or how good was Daniel Jones? I imagine pretty decent at times. There's the reason some drafted him in the second round of startups last year. <laughs> yeah. That mean well. There was. Uh, rook- Rookie year, 17 points per game from old dimes. QB 15. <clears throat> yep. Uh, 13, 16, and last year, or two years ago, 18. Last year, 10 and a half injured yep. after that ACL. Yeah, he only played about six games. So he's uh, just sub 50% on. <clears throat> you ready to, at, to ready to ready to hit the stats up pretty good here? Uh, Mr. Ohio Haskins. State, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, yeah. the, the data sucks, and RIP, unfortunately, too. Oh, Dwayne. Uh, first year only played seven games, started second year, played six. Started the season, but the stats are terrible on his ass. They're off. So we've had one one guy get uh, one year and done. We've had one guy get, and we've had one guy. Because if you were banking <laughs> on Dwayne Haskins getting his second year starting, it did pan out. He actually started the season. He got buried. <laughs> <laughs> they said, "Fuck this." Nine point one and ten point seven. Yeah, he he was he killed you if you invested in him. And he was the fifteenth pick. Yeah, he's right in the middle. Mm-hmm. I just go back through the numbers here after that. Joe Burrow, obviously, really good. Uh, to a, this will be easy. Still starting for their teams. Don't forget Jordan um, Love. Jordan Love, late round pick, late first round pick. Now he, he's going to fit the bill as the longest. Nothing. That's a, he's going to be the longest so far that didn't see the, the field, patient, right? the patient outlier. Uh, so far, so good though for those people who held on to Jordan Love, huh? I mean, the combination of Mike being one of the late quarterbacks taken in the draft, being able to get on the field for that long, you're just like, holy crap! And then look at do him. you remember? Do you remember when I did backflips? Uh, it was two years ago. When Aaron Rodgers was talking about retirement and like right oh, yeah. before, right about this time in the off season, Jordan Love was getting pushed up, and I got a, like a one twelve for him, and I was oh, like, yeah. "Fucking awesome, cash out." You know what I regret? I wish I still had that Jordan Love share, huh? <laughs> right now. Depends what you did with the one twelve. It, it probably doesn't matter. <laughs> to be completely honest, I mean, if you if you struck gold, that's the only way. 
Uh, what about 21? Uh, so Trevor Lawrence obviously still starting and playing, but now we start to hit the uh, the shitter awards, right? Zach Wilson. How long did Zach Wilson get? I won't count this past year for him because he wasn't supposed to be starting. Just wait till we get the Trey Lance. I mean, th- th- this class right here is where you start to have the conversations because you had Zach Wilson, Trey Lance, and you right. had Justin Fields. So Zach Wilson is the, uh, the two-year guy. Don't count his third year, but he had his rookie year and then uh, was the starter for his second season, and then they found out he was terrible. Uh, what about his stats? The but these are fucked. Hey, better than Dwayne Hask. 12 and a half his rookie year, 11.8 in the second year. He got a two year guy. Put him in the bad category. Um, Trey Lance didn't play much his rookie year. I believe Starter he... his second year, then <sighs> hurt. I believe we got what, uh, three starts out of him? Uh, no, not, I'm sorry, not his rookie season. He didn't start. Any, I don't even think he started that year, did he? He's played one game, started one game, I believe. Did he start one? To- yeah, towards the end of the Oh, were they just, re- oh, were they, were actually, they resting him? He started two games. So they rested, uh, he went one and one through for 600 yards, two starts, five touchdowns. Actually, not terrible. Second year, obviously, oh. he played the... <laughs> Jimmy G was hurt one game, and then they rested him in week 17, I believe. And his second year, he started the uh, monsoon against Justin Fields. Broke his ankle in the second. Never to play in an NFL game again. So four starters. Looking like there's no path to playing time anytime soon coincidentally though i've made this mistake right last year you probably made this mistake we bought some trey you know our trey lance and then also uh drafted them you know and probably what the top six rounds top five rounds of startups heading into the uh off season this time not believing in brock birdie yeah i don't remember drafting much of them in startups but i definitely there was times where i was buying the trying to buy the dip for sure what two full years out of trey lance if you sold in the off season you were a smart person you got uh yeah, I, I don't know. After the injury, there was a there was there was sell windows for cheap, but uh, for cheaper than the first two round startup picks that he was. But when he got drafted, you had that whole year and the whole following year where he was in the second round of startups. What about uh, Justin Fields? Just got dealt. How many years did he get? Oh, look at that three three full years of Justin Fields. Mac Jones, same thing, right? Three yeah. full years of Mac Jones <laughs> before they moved on. Um, the the only thing it. the only thing is though when you start talking about it right Wilson Lance and Mac Jones the floor and the value insulation wasn't very high now Mac Jones at least had his rookie season where he kept the uh, the value up but then we were just we were we felt like we were fighting for Mac Jones and the value was dipping uh, twenty two only quarterback in the first round Woof. two years rookie year and then this past year he he always felt though like what was his highest startup value I don't think he ever got to like the area where people felt good about drafting Fifth Can, Kenny Pickett yeah the best you could do yep. not too bad. You want to pull up a sheet for me? Just a notepad or whatever? Sure. Let's see what the average is. And this is. Are you just going by starting seasons right now? So just go four plus. All the guys that hit four plus years. Four, four plus year starters. Years. Mind you, we're going to have some guys that haven't actually played four years too. And interested to see how many are at. So from 2015, Winston and Mariota. There's one, two, Mahomes, Watson. Did I don't remember what we said about Mitch. How many did he get? Did he get four? Uh-uh. He got, I believe no. it was three. Because 2020. Um, Baker did not. Darnold did not. Josh Allen did. Lamar, five, six. Um, Lamar, obviously these guys are still starting, so they're in this right. bucket. David yep. Jones? Yeah, so we're at uh, Winston, Mariota's two, Goff, three, Wentz, four, Mahomes, five, Watson, six, Josh Allen, seven, Lamar, eight, Kyler Murray, nine, Daniel Jones, ten. Uh, then uh, we can put in Burrow, Tua, and Herbert. And that'll be that'll be it. Everybody else hasn't played enough so how many total do we have that'd be 13 with those three 13 quarterbacks at four plus years and my total sample from 2015 is 1 to 13 and 27 28 what's the percentage on that adam 29 total quarterback yep so we're gonna go 29 divided by 13 it's gonna be uh, other way around sorry it's gonna be 44 percent 44 percent at 44 percent saw four years at least of starting all right let's add in the uh the three-year guys three-year plus so take that of the four-year guys and we can add in or not trey lance justin fields mac jones uh, Sam Darnold. So we got six to add to that total. Yep, total of six guys there. So I get you a... nineteen total. What's that percentage? So that's sixty-five percent now. Sixty-five percent. Sixty-five percent of quarterbacks drafted in round one over the last ten years have started had three years of the starting quarterback job. L- locked in starter for their team. <clears throat> I mean the. From that standpoint, I would probably say that that isn't that bad. the The problem then becomes what were all these guys' trade value and 
then not even that i would say the biggest thing now is with the way the game currently sits as fantasy like what is oh, I what to put trevor what, lawrence in there so we need to add that to the top one has he started four years yet he, he's three he'll be last a four-year year starter his, last year was his third year this will be his fourth he should have been in both of those if he, he hasn't started four yet this is four years plus the top one right but he's he's getting a fourth gonna year, start right? okay he, he's, sure. he's not getting benched no. <laughs> there's, no there's not trade talks around trevor lawrence heading into 24 no so four well i mean just so basically it's like 40 it'd be 47 percent or whatever and then it'll be 68 percent maybe uh so it'd be 14 out of 14 out of 30 and then what was it uh yeah six it's, uh, uh it'd be two thirds so two out of every three is gonna start three years at least three years so yeah what 31 percent um bryce young cj stroud anthony richardson off of that total is that 27 quarterback because so we don't gonna, know yet and they yeah. just haven't played long enough so it'll be half then if you do that four years half or four years how many are at least three then so then 70 be, something percent 70 it'd be it'd be right just shy of 70 oh no we get three so we're going down to from 27 27 total starters now right or is it 26 yep. yeah 71 percent 71 percent of quarterbacks draft first round get at least was pretty good odds yeah i mean it, for for being the starting for keeping the starting job pretty um, good insulation when you're talking about rookie draft well i mean it depends if you're talking about like them actually being the starter or what their dynasty value is it probably going to be i think that's the other thing for sure if they're if they're a starting quarterback right if they're one of the top 32 that have an nfl job that are relatively secure the value right like we can all acknowledge that <laughs> well i think i think the years of past they probably all would i think moving forward like just the way that the, the the game is trending, Mike. So uh, let's just take a look at startup ADP. This is actually a really good exercise with startup ADP. The the thing that I've I've really noticed is not that the quarterbacks don't go high early. The ones that we think are very good, they go high still, right? So I mean, the first round's littered with them. Of the first nine picks, eight of them quarterbacks, right? A bunch in round two: Caleb, Jordan Love, Trevor Lawrence, Kyler Murray, Dak Prescott. Round three, you got Brock, Jaden Daniels, Tua, and Drake May. But then, Mike, I mean, this this field share at 401, you can basically like that's just because it's old data. That's going to totally drop off. And then you only have Jared Goff in the fifth, and then it really starts coming down. Like these are a lot lower for the mid quarterbacks than we're ever used to seeing when we would draft prior to this. Like you're talking about Bryce and Deshaun in the sixth. They're starters down in the tenth round, really. You know, like that's uh, Matthew Stafford's an 809. Aaron Rodgers. Now, granted, he's really old, but Russell Wilson, mm-hmm. Geno Smith, Derek Carr, Daniel Jones. These guys are in 11 and 12 as far as rounds go. So, And in terms of value, though, like if you needed a quarterback, <clears throat> what are you willing to give up? That's probably going to be a very big difference between me and I think a lot of average gamers. I, I'm not, I don't want to trade a starting quarterback for like a random late second, but I think a lot of people would just take a second and move on because they're not, they don't, That's they what don't I'm see asking. there's any like, value. What, what are you comfortable with? You're, you're looking at your team and you're like, I need yeah. a QE3. What am I paying Should- or what am I selling for? For. yeah what do you pay um like aaron Rodgers, for example what do you pay mm-hmm. for aaron Rodgers? i think aaron Rodgers right now i'd be willing to pay a mid second in this class for me where are you at just pointing it out right just setting the stage that even those Derek cars of the world the aaron uh, Rodgers. Th- Derek cars probably one of the ones that like what would you pay for Derek carr i think it's still mid second even in this class i really like this class but a mid second i'm going i get a guy who i could best ball leagues we know the value of just having those guys on your roster for the occasional spike week or making your lineup but even in lineup leagues as like your swing quarterback your third quarterback like there's mm-hmm. some value to that right there's a little security and insurance that i got this guy in case you know fucks up a shoulder you know for a week or two or bruises a rib or whatever um this class is really good but i mean what are you looking at there in a down running back class sure. <laughs> right like a sure. guy who's probably what, got third round draft capital a jatavian sanders type well yeah he, he's probably late second yep i mean really in reality what's the hit rate on that and rookie warp will tell you it's fucking abysmal he even for a below average quarterback the warp on that for your league going to be much better than 18th 19th player in the class yeah oh i mean the uh the only thing is though, like with with Derek Carr, if you if you're in a lineup league, like if I had him as my quarterback three, I'm I'm fine with that. I don't have a problem. But I'm I probably never feel good about starting Derek Carr in a lineup league. In best ball, to your point, I think it's different. Where like I, I'm happy to have Derek Carr for pretty cheap on all my teams. You know, just let me have that shot. If he has one or two weeks, that's all I need. So uh, let's use like the Raiders as an example. They okay. signed Gardner Minshew. They have Aiden O'Connell on the roster. But let's say in the draft in the third round they take Bo Nix because they're like I can't believe this guy's still hanging around. Sure. Bo Nix, where's he coming in startup value? Where's he come in, in in quarterback ranks relative to a Derek Carr or an Aaron Rodgers or Matt Stafford? It's a good right. question because right now, uh, now we again, this is where the draft capital is going to probably switch it. But right now, he's a tenth. Him and Bo, uh, him and Michael Penix. So Bo Nix and Michael mm-hmm. Penix are in the tenth round when people are drafting rookies in startups. So this is a 
more of a lottery ticket swing, I guess, at the 10th round. So if they're third round picks, they probably go simil- similar, but down. Like they're probably going to come off the board after Danny Dimes, which would make him a 13 to yeah, 13 to 14th round pick, probably maybe 15th. Like Dimes is a good one to use too, because hypothetically in this scenario, right, say the Giants don't take, I'm like I want to run this back with this fucking trash can. Like the garbage of the garbage, but he's got a starting job compared to, you know, a rookie taken in the, the third or fourth round. Um, it'll be interesting. That, to see. Danny Dimes is going to go ahead of people and start up drafts. He's going to go ahead and he's going to trade for more. Yeah. Until well, that rookie actually like secures a job or gets on the field or whatever or makes some plays or whatever in the hype build. You know, I'm talking like June ranks when you, you don't know fuck, right? You don't know anything. <laughs> yep. People are doing a start of a draft in June. They go, yeah, I, I take Dimes as my third quarterback. Fuck it. I'll take him on a best ball team, that kind of thing. I guess the question is then so like Dimes right there, right? As a starting quarterback will be going in the 12th round. Are are you look are you trying to compare it with receivers? Is that was or what was the? Uh... I, I just wanted to establish the longevity of quarterbacks still does exist. <laughs> like you do have outliers, you do have misses. We can say what twenty eight, twenty nine percent of quarterbacks you might only get two years out, and two of those guys you didn't get really fucking anything. Paxton Lynch and Josh Rosen, right? You got the one year in the shitter real early. This is I guess where I'm where. Uh... <laughs> The quarterback, I think the quarterback floor is going to be really interesting to track and monitor because, like, Bryce Young is, is intriguing. Now, granted, you're you're buying, so am I, in on the Bryce Young, but just to give context, Jaden Reed is now ahead of Bryce Young in ADP. Just, that's actually pretty, I don't, I don't think we ever would have seen that before this year, ever. Fair. I think we probably would agree with that, right? Like, that's, and I like Jaden Reed's, um, what we saw, but that that's like, uh, just for me to even conceptualize, that's kind of crazy because now, uh, when you go Bryce Young, versus the rookies in the class right so you're looking at now ahead of him you got Jaden reed jordan addison zay flowers says so four Rasheed rice five tank dell six yep uh let's see that next one will be uh seven of the, the receivers in last year's class are ahead of bryce young there's obviously going to be some uh receivers that are rookies later but that that's already kind of crazy i don't i don't think we ever would have seen that as far as values go and i think it's wrong point of the podcast right no 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 um, that's why i'm kind of leading with it right Right. i'm against it right adam let's look at some wide receivers and you don't have to give the numbers on it because the names are going to tell you a lot same time frame 2015 uh amari cooper i think we'd say that's a hit absolutely Devonte Park, uh, up and down, no. and not he didn't really give he, you what he you wanted. He was a fifth year breakout. <laughs> yeah, well, why I say up and down? He was down for a long time, and then all of a sudden, freaking he had one good year. He came. He he's the face planner outlier. How about that? And that's what I should have led yeah. with. Yeah, there you go. Nelson Aguilar, Brashad Perriman, Philip Dorsett. Just letting you know, 2015 class, man. You had one, two, three, six wide receivers go in the first round. Only one of those six was worth a fuck. All right, 2016, uh, it does not. First one, you'll love this guy. Corey Coleman, remember him? Uh, Will Fuller? I'd say Will Fuller is a yes. Will Fuller could be a yes. But then you had Josh Dotson and Laquan Treadwell. Will Fuller had some, like, what do you want to He had some dynasty value for a while because of as soon as Watson got there and it was like moon ball to you see some Watson of the long didn't Will have Fuller the strongest. Balls. Yeah, yeah, Watson didn't have the strongest arm, but he sure knew how to find Will Fuller sometimes downfield. It was, it was I think fun he, to watch. I mean, he was okay. Yeah. Uh, but Josh Dotson, Laquan Treadwell? I mean, yeah, we can all acknowledge these. I think 15 and 16, especially, like, wide receiver classes were absolute dog shit. I just whole. gave you 10 wide receivers for these first two classes. Two of them are good. Two out of 10. 20%. I don't need a calculator for that one. That's not good. Not great. Um, how about 2017? Cordy Davis? Too yeah. good at times? Yeah, it's and a moment, bad. but pretty, pretty rough. Mike Granted, Williams? now, with all these guys, we have the whole sample size. I'd say Mike Williams actually was pretty he, – he kept his value pretty well. I would John not agree. Ross. Just a reminder for people, all three of those guys were top 10 NFL picks. Davis at five, Mike at seven, and John Ross. And so a little bit rosier than the two other glasses. Still some whiffs, right? Uh, 2018, DJ Moore and Calvin Ridley. He only had two wide receivers in the first round. So um, 2019. Okay, he was fine. all right. I mean, he's still got dynasty value today. Luckily, the Chiefs signed him for his for his <laughs> dynasty value, right? Uh, what about Nikhil Harry, though? Fa- that's when, like, face mm-hmm. planter really started, wasn't it? Yeah. The other thing with that's receiver. Like, the other thing with receivers, like we we care. I would say as I'm starting to think about the classes, right? Like there's certain first round receivers that we didn't really want to draft in certain uh, dynasty classes. Like you know, you think of Rugs, for example. He was going a lot later, but you get the the second round wide receivers. A lot of times we're like, okay, AJ Browns, the DK Metcalf types. Let's see who else we got in the second rounds that are. But, but we can keep going. Go with the first round. Let's keep going with these. 2020 12th yeah. overall pick. Rugs. Yep. 
Jerry Judy, the 15th overall pick. C.D. Lamb, big hit. Nice yep. job on that one. Uh, Jalen Reger, my Eagles. Big Jesus time. Christ. Yeah, rough. Uh, Justin Jefferson, Brandon Ayuk hit. Yeah, it's that, that was what class? Yeah, tw- so in 2020, now that's going to be five classes ago. Uh, 2021, Jamar Chase, hit, Waddle, hit, Smitty, hit, Kadarius, Tony, whiff, Rashad Bateman, whiff. Well, 22, Garrett Wilson, hit, Chris Olave, hit, so far, Sean Dotson, Traylon Burks. Traylon was the one that most people didn't see coming at all, yeah. And then last year, JSN, Quentin Johnson, big, big whiff, Zay Flowers, hit, Jordan Addison. Let me, uh, let me count these guys up, Adam. I'll give you just the hits. Well, one, are we counting Corey Davis and Mike Williams? You can count Mike Williams, I mean. DJ Moore, Calvin Ridley, four, I guess the five. thing about Corey Davis was he probably buying into the hype hollywood six uh lamb seven jefferson eight Ayuk nine do i count judy i would say yes yeah you can go ahead. i would count because he because he because he going into uh, what was it after year three or going into the year three like had a nice bump in value again so i think yep. count him. uh chase waddle smitty that gives us 13 london wilson alave gives us 16 and JSN Flowers Addison gives us 19 wide receiver. I'll get you the totals 32, 30, 37. So you got 19 out of 37, Adam. Just it's over be, 50%. Just, be just over 50. Yep. Are either hits compared to quarterbacks at 70 ish? 70, you got three years, right? Right. <clears throat> well, because this is the thing, though. Like, going back to the 15 um, and all those other guys, sa- same with quarterbacks, technically. But you, you get to see that they eventually flame completely out. But what we didn't have on those guys is what their value retention was at the time. Like, how, how quickly right. did they flame out with the, the draft capital? I- I'll say, like, the numbers, I, I guess the, the numbers overall, though, are kind of similar in my mind. Um, other than to your point, like you get, you're gonna get a better percentage of guys at quarterback that start for what do we say, three years minimum, right? You got, uh, you got a little over two out of three gave you three year starting jobs. So like Kevin White would be in the Dwayne Haskins, <clears throat> correct? Over his first two years, he started five games. I guess because, well, I'm sorry, go ahead. Did you have something else here? Um, Brashad Perriman is another one. Like, I'm really interested to see what, how often Brashad Perriman fucking, um, oh, Jesus Christ, over Adam, I can give him his first three years. You know, only two were with Baltimore, and then he got dumped to Cleveland. But over those first three years, he started, ima- imagine, man, you take a rookie and, and you only start him one game as rookie year. I took him really high in keeper drafts, I remember. Roughed. Roughed. <sighs> Philip Dorsett's got to be another just... Kevin White was, like, uh, just always hurt. We never even really feel like we got to see anything. Uh, at least Philip Dorsett started multiple... No, he did not. Actually, he started <laughs> zero games. <laughs> yeah, he was awful. Uh, started seven his second year and then got dumped to New England. Uh, I, just looking at it, man, uh, at least with wide receivers, I don't think the value retention was that great. From the receivers back in, like, 15 and 16 in those classes? Yeah. yeah. Let me no. try to go more recently, and we'll see if we can pull some keep trade cut data off of these guys. Yeah, you, d- you definitely can more recently get uh, the the data for their value retention. Like I'm just looking right now, just just to give clarity to this class with the ADP in front of me. Every receiver, every rookie receiver that was drafted with any kind of con- like of any consequence, other than Quentin Johnson, is going ahead of both Bryce Young and Will Levis in st- in startups. Which to your is really the point of your podcast right now, of this podcast right now is the difference in the values of receiver and quarterbacks versus, versus what we've seen historically. Right. I'm looking at, I'm trying to see the other other receivers. So, so the Marvin Mims um, was a second round pick. He was he's obviously in the 14th now. Um, this is crazy, man. Keep trade got like cleaning up their database. They don't even want to rank some of these guys. You you, you have to go type it in and Google. Uh, it's so fun. You so type in the name and keep trade cut and then you can get to that page i love no going shit. to do that yeah I, I, i've been doing that a lot because they do yeah i was out. just i was trying to look up uh um Nikhil harry and Jalen rager and keep trade cuts like nah we ain't even yeah because they, they don't want to keep that data like in their pool but if you go keep trade cut Nikhil harry you can pull it up all right we got one all-time positional rank so this is back in 2020 now the other thing we, we definitely know though like let's pull it up but the de- one thing we definitely know is you could get off of the face planner receivers you used to be able to get off of them you <laughs> now now you I, can't so at this time um in 2020 the beginnings of like keep trade cut they had him ranked as wide receiver 38 following okay. his abysmal rookie year so he still held it whatever god awful reason he didn't see a big dip until uh midway through the 2020 <laughs> season and then people right. were like oh yeah he really is ass he's ass clown yep uh let me do that with jalen rager too since they're like hey yeah that, that, <laughs> that's put him by the way that's a cheat code if you want to find uh 
if you want to find good, people. That's a good pull. Because it, it still exists. They had to keep it in their database. It's just they don't want you to be able to get to it easy. So at one time, Jalen Rager, about this time, was up to wide receiver 27 in 2020. See? Like, that's the crazy part is that even those receivers, I mean, the, just think. Now, granted, we all have we have hindsight 2020, so it skews what we can think in the year, like, going after their first season. But those names, people just weren't ready to quit. Uh, following his abysmal rookie year, though, he did drop down. The that was after his rookie season? That was after his rookie season, so in 2021. Yeah, I'm looking at it here. Um, I, see it. I see it there, yep. Let's see if we got smarter, right? Kadarius Tony. Uh, I can tell you Adam and I did not. We were we were <laughs> buying the hype, man. We put him on the fuck, or on the YouTube banner. Absolutely. Young Joker. Kadarius <laughs> Tony. T's and P's to us, boy. Uh, uh, interested to see where it was. The crazy part about his career, Mike, is he got the his he got up to wide receiver thirty, which was his highest at the time. He got into the twenties, going into the twenty one season. So this time, following his rookie year in twenty two, he was wide receiver forty. Let's see as a whole if we're getting better at this. What's crazy, Mike? Just think about plus. that though. He he got his peak in value twice: November nineteenth in twenty twenty, and this is November seventh in twenty twenty one. That's wide receiver 24 and wide receiver 29 this is after the guy's showing you like it's very sketchy now granted we were we were part of the people driving the hype train up but that's a crazy arc to see honestly jamison williams up to wide receiver 16 so apparently we only make this distinction for guys like sky Moore and quentin johnston that that i think is actually kind of the point though when you think about it is more the the value retention like you you have it feels like unless you get quentin johnson to your point like with uh sky Moore, unless you go that bad you have you have like a, a over a year window for a guy that didn't give you a year now granted when it falls to your point like i think what we're seeing to all these graphs which is on podcast you may not be able to see what we're looking at there's there's definitely a window to sell and get out of like you can get value retention but when it falls like if you go into year two with nothing typically that's when they fall like what's jmo at right now that's a good one to say uh, if you didn't sell after the uh 48 right now so that and that's where you start to get to mike can i tell you the craziest part we were talking about danny dimes we were talking about russell wilson geno smith Derek carr aaron Rodgers. jmo's going ahead of all of them except Rodgers. and this is like when we're at what are we doing here with jmo interesting he's interesting. wide receiver 50 in key in uh startups by the way so i think you said keep jay has him at 48 so pretty similar yeah. but <clears throat> Mike, just think about this. Jameson Williams still going ahead of Cortland Sutton, Romeo Dobbs, DeAndre Hopkins by two rounds. It just speaks to, at least right now, the level of insulation for young wide receivers that people believe in. So the quarterback equivalent, would you put him in like the Kenny Pickett-esque bucket? I like that one, yeah. Where there's still some believers? Right? I like that That one. kind of insulation? <clears throat> what really makes it for Jamo, right? Injured rookie year? <clears throat> he, he, he gets a little speed extra, and draft cap. He gets a little extra time because of the uh, the rookie injury riddled season, right? See, they they wrote Nikhil Harry off after one year and put him where JMO is currently, right at the the fiftieth spot. But that's a thirty second overall pick in the <clears> NFL <throat> draft, right? Not a top fifteen guy. Easy Even to like hate on him. John Dotson is uh basically in that same territory as draft picks too. He's in the twelfth round right now. Possibly so you kind of got like a for quarterback wise, you kind of got like a, a Mitch Trubisky, Sam Darnold, Kenny Pickett bucket bad highly drafted wide receivers into yeah yeah now at the end of the day though let me ask you <clears throat> right. not just for you but just for the average dynasty gamer putting their roster construction together they may have those guys they like but who at the end of the day would they be willing to pay more for wide receivers three or four need they have a quarterback three need right right now if, you, if you're telling me you needed to go get you're, you're trying to go buy uh, your quarterback three, Aaron Rodgers, Danny Dimes, so whatever, someone in that range, or JMO. Yeah, you're, you're going to probably have to. And hypothetically, I think in a trading scenario here, you're probably going to have to pay more for the quarterback because I'll, of I, the the scarcity, right? The, there's only 32 starters. The one thing will be interesting again. Track is how the replacement level quarterback, like literally the guys that come in, you know, like the replacements. I'm talking the the goofballs that no one's heard of, the Jake Brownings. You know, those guys, if they can keep enough, if they can keep path, basically, can they hold serve enough times? Is, is it is it is it have no quarterback three and just chase one, try to buy whatever shitter has a starting job? Because that's what people started to do last year. Now it'll be interesting to see if that's if you can. But like basically, you had so many guys, Mike. Instead of going to buy Aaron Rodgers or Dimes, what well, Dimes ended up getting hurt. Derek Carr's, Geno Smith, the guys that were the technical starter, probably go Lisa. 
you know, what is his name? You could buy for a third. You could buy all, all those type of guys last year. Granted, that's just, this is recency bias of last year, but I think that's what um, – I think if you had to try to buy Aaron Rodgers, Russell Wilson, Geno Smith, you're going to have to pay more, to your point. I think here's the question that I don't know – that anyone ever tries to go buy them, frankly, if right. that makes sense. I think you're correct, though. In a, in a vacuum, you have to pay more for the quarterback that has a starting job than you would J-Mo, Dotson, whoever in this range. I'm with you. I was looking at it, too. Like We only make that distinction for certain players at the wide receiver position, right? Like J-Mo is kind of a, an interesting one when everything's telling you he should be out. The Nikhil Harry thing, Jalen Rager to an extent. But Henry Ruggs, good draft capital, blazing speed. Now, obviously, once the accident happened, it was over for him. But leading up, there was still hype coming off his rookie year. Just not as much. Correct. And is it, be, is it because he started from so, so far back? Yeah, I think the community wasn't really in on Henry Ruggs the the NFL NFL success for Henry Ruggs and what he was going to mean to a team versus what he was going to mean in fantasy I don't think the fantasy community really ever if you have the reverence I think that's really what it is it's hard to explain but it is if you have in the Debbie community especially and if you start talking about guys with reverence that are rookie receivers we want to believe for for so long because Mike you know what it's kind of like this I'm just thinking about it now the way majority of people are consuming content and thinking about stuff people are starting to watch reception perception as much as they can any type of thing on all these rookies Mm -hmm. so they start to get bought into the ones that are uh that they believe will be difference makers so those guys whatever group of ones that we coined that jameson williams i think fit that bill i I can't quit you there's so many i can't quit you clubs you know for guys like jamo and it, it was kind of the same for henry ruggs to an extent but he he was more following his rookie year he was more just by keep trade cut he was uh, 40 to 35 range. And Which, then you got in season, he did a little bit early on in that season and moved up, and then obviously the uh, the tragic car accident. and then Just to give, done. Mike, because I just want to uh, also say it can it can work the other way. Like Jaden Reed speaks to that now, I think, very much so, right? You're like uh, and then the y- rise. You can produce as a receiver, and then as in your first two years. Like, for example, I think this is another way to look at it. Jaden Reed, not a revered name, but Mike, with his rookie season in the books, I think he'd have to have a really bad year too to really dip like I almost feel like he got himself to that three-year club that you're talking about with the starters like if he's just a little bit down this year let's call it wide receiver 32 he'll stay in that wide receiver 32 off of age and we, when we saw the rookie you know season right I'm not saying that's right or wrong I'm just saying going into his year three now it's like he's gonna be in the same mix as guys like Terry McLaurin Cooper Cup Christian Kirk like just to, I'm trying to give uh, Rhett Ruggs range that you were saying you said 35 to 40 right so in startups right now just to give names when you put the rookies in 35 is Xavier Worthy 36 Cooper Cup 37 Terry McLaurin 38 Adnan Mitchell 39 Christian Kirk then it's Chris Godwin Amari Cooper Keenan Allen Calvin Ridley like you think about what that means for Henry Ruggs to get up there like that's a that's a decent spot to be in 35 and 40 as far as values go that puts you in the six to seven to eight round range I think I want to put a bow on this whole thing just with my thoughts on it yeah absolutely We'll run one final like numbers thing just to, to emphasize it because I am curious about it, feeling how they're going to turn out. But when you're faced in a rookie draft specifically, drafting a wide receiver or drafting a quarterback, and we assume first round NFL draft capital, like you know that. My thoughts on it are number one, the the ceiling on the quarterbacks. I think we can agree. I don't need numbers on this. You can say the ceiling on a first round rookie quarterback hit is much greater than the ceiling even on the best rookie wide receiver hit in a super flex league. For example, if you if you go Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson on it, that's the that would be that's the, just the rosiest outcome for a wide receiver, right? That would be the difference, the differentiator. Now those guys would be very rare. Even a guy like Puka though, with nothing went all the way up to the mid-second but to your point I'm because I'm with you if it's a guy like CJ Stroud you go to quarterback three um and and basically if you have a guy that really shows high high end upside the quarterback will typically go go ahead so that's on the high end side Joe Burrow Deshaun Watson Justin Herbert Josh Allen Patrick Mahomes CJ Stroud Anthony Richardson like it's a it's a pretty big list of like if you hit and show out as a first round NFL quarterback here those are those are to the top those are the eight quarterbacks right there yep if you do it as a wide receiver you go up like you go to elite but you got to be Jamar Chase Justin Jefferson and you're a mid to back end first round startup value conversation right in super flex leagues how often how often would you see a Justin Jefferson or Jamar Chase traded straight up for a Joe Burrow or a Justin Herbert of I think you're starting to see it more than you ever used to but I still okay. believe that it's uh quarterbacks go first I agree okay. I believe that for sure we established the ceiling is higher we've established that the floor 
at least as higher, right? 70% for that. <laughs> yeah, see, I think that's the, I think that is where the conversation basically is though. Is it, what are we judging it off of? Because most of those, th no, I'm not gonna say most, there's plenty of guys that started three years that people really weren't gonna pay much for. Or let me just put this way. I think there's probably times in days of old where we got people to pay. I, I, I did too, Mike, frankly. I got people to pay for quarterbacks down that list. I don't think anymore, at least in the current stage of dynasty that guys that just start three years you can break people off for like will levis is one now granted he's a round two guy so let's not use him um bright bright sean will be very interesting to track he's the main one to think of this class because there's not that many um but like what what will he go for versus like he again he's in the range after one bad year Zay Flowers, Rasheed Rice. I think I think the the conversation is the hit rate. You'll have a longer time with them as a starting quarterback. Probably we we have sample size that's pretty decent to say they're not going to just fall off the face of the earth and not start after a year. Most of them, the large majority, I, right? I think the Bryce Young one's good, right? Because you said it was it was a terrible rookie year, right? And people Horrible. were very divisive on it. Yeah, you had Zay Flowers, a first round wide receiver who hit at a pretty decent clip, yep. and they're valued still about the same because people look at it and go, "I need a quarterback." right more important to my roster construction to fill out my super flex spot than it is to fill out my second or third wide receiver spot because well, i can find other wide receivers right well the, the the thing is though like when i think about it bryce young i don't believe is gonna have this happen he's gonna be an interesting one to track but the floor i think could fall out on bright like let me let's just use range of outcomes and try to put our bias okay. aside it's hard i i don't think he's falling off a cliff so but if that was to happen well, i let's think say he he's kenny he, pickett over the next next year too there you go that that's wh where does he go next year in startups let's say he has a horrible season like that again could he be an eighth or ninth rounder if he's if they haven't brought anybody in cut him traded him yeah i'm looking like, like the odds historically are telling us he's getting three years well i guess that four now, now that's that's i think where the conversation lies and where the draft capital in startups i think could be different i think he'll be a starter going into that following year but the community will basically be like fuck you and he'll probably go to at least the eighth round and maybe even more um right so a guy like Zay Flowers, basically, or you don't have to use him. Jordan Addison, Rasheed Rice, any one of those guys, Tank Dell. Um, Tank Dell probably has more to fall because he doesn't have the insulation. But guys like that I don't think have as quite as low as a floor. Maybe Tank Dell does. I think Tank Dell probably has as low of a floor if things were to go awry in year two. But the first round receiver types, like JSN, people are already like, somehow there's a panic on JSN, which I still don't freaking get. But he seems to have value insulation for the same amount of time. I, I think what it is, is when I look at it, if you hit as a quarterback, so if you have the traits and you have the capital and you hit, there's no, there's not even a debate, I don't think, for the most part, that like that ceiling carries more weight. You, you can't get a, even a Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, CeeDee Lamb, Marvin Harrison, those guys aren't going to go ahead of the top four or five quarterbacks probably ever uh in the next in the in the realistic future right the way that the landscape is in, in superflex but i do think that the the value insulation of the receivers right now versus the quarterbacks that fall is where the conversation definitely is uh i think it's more up in the air i i, I think that the th to your point you know if you have a quarterback even that flops he's probably going to have a job and be a quarterback two option for you in dynasty for his sophomore year in even though you hate it, you probably can't get off of it. He probably gives you a, a stopgap. He probably plugs a hole, you know, quarterback three for you, even in super flex leagues. So I don't think it's like dire on them. I do think that, at least with the way that the community views are, just kind of crazy to see how many receivers are up here, man. Dude, for example, just to give you context, Mike, right now, there's 50 receivers in the top 11 rounds in startups. 49 in the first That's 10. That's cr that 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 feels like. I'd be curious. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up a Deco's ADP from 22. I'm, I want to see if that's really just my memory or what. But that seems like a lot in the first 10 rounds, man. That's that's feels like there's there's becoming more every single year because of the the simple and, fact, right? We and, we've started to weed out running backs, weeded out tight ends, and you've seen a dip the last two years from quarterbacks. Yeah, the one by, position by default, that's basically. like the yeah. one position that's dodged all the bullets has been wide receivers. Yep. Like you and I you and I talk about this when we do the trade show, right? At this time of year, do you want to be the guy buying running backs? Yeah, I'll take the wide receiver because it's a little bit more safer dynasty value, especially once they're already established, right? The, the ones who shit the bed, you just write them off and you never think about them again, right? Like we started to shift to that mindset, you and I personally, where it's like, QJ, nah, I'm good, right? I'm not giving you a second. Jalen Rager types, like we're, we're good. If you didn't fucking fire, we're done. Like we're, we're pounding the, Jesus, how many more times do you need? <laughs> just 
Yep. Those kind of guys you just get rid of and, and move on. So you feel safer in the pool that you already have, right? Like, I, oh, fuck, I watched Zay Flowers do something this past year. I watched Tank Dell do something this last year. Right? They hit Rasheed Rice. I watched these guys, Jaden Reed. I watched these guys actually do something. They're now in the pool of ones I'm good, and it's a big-ass fucking pool. It's a big-ass pool. So when you're in a startup draft, it's like, do I want to take Zamir White or, you know, Jaden Reed? <laughs> Fucking Jaden Reed, easily, no question, done. You even get down to some of those wide receiver 50 types that you're listening there, Adam. It's like, do you rather have that Zamir type, white type running back, or would you rather have that wide receiver 50? The answer is almost like whoever the 50 is. Yeah, I mean, you got to get, well, you got to get to at least that point to even have a conversation. The ones ahead are all a guarantee, yeah. right? Guaranteed, locked. Yeah, I'm looking, man, and uh, it's interesting. It's actually not all that different as far as that goes, Mike. From 22 now, but 22, I'll admit, like was when. You had the very polar uh what, what you basically see mike is the running backs now instead of being in rounds two three and four they're now so much higher five yep. six seven eight right but to, like to this point i just want to give you th- this is actually where the where the conversation for wide receivers is i think it speaks to what uh, what we're talking about with the floor of a quarterback versus the floor of a receiver this is crazy to look at i'm just gonna i want to put this next when the rookies are on the board right now okay so in round three, you're looking at uh, tw- anywhere from 12 to 14 receivers, whether the picks or not go um, in the first three rounds. Mike, we're at like seven to eight in 22, and then you then you get then you, then you get the run right. Then you, so you start getting the runs in the fourth. It's like it's it like it, that that's actually swapped. flip swapped. The running backs and the wide receivers have totally swapped there. Right 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 now, Mike 606, 604 and 606. That's wide receiver 19 and 20. The 22 season, you get to the six the sixth round. The sixth round, you're talking. There's already 30 receivers in that draft now. So we got rookie quarterbacks in every class. Can you give me what QB 24 is? By round for each. So you want 24s or are you want QB ours 24. right now? Yeah, what's okay. QB 24? Where does he go? In th- this this year's. Baker Mayfield comes off the board at 706. It's quarterback 24. 2022. Where did yeah, 24 come off of? Up. Okay, so QB 24 was at the 909. So they're actually a little bit higher on the back end, right? And th- basically what you have, Mike, is you have, when you look at it, so it's tw- in, the, in the seventh round, you have Will Levis, Baker Mayfield, Kirk Cousins, J.J. McCarthy. And then there's a, basically a free fall after that from, you know, they don't really go to like the 10th and 11th. Now, in a deco in 22, you're looking at these quarterbacks. They're, they're going like up higher. Like you got 20, well, not to the 24 point. Brian Tannehill's at the 909. So that's actually lower by two rounds. But you have, right. look at all these guys after that. You got 10th round is littered with these quarterbacks. You, you could not get a quarterback, starting quarterback outside of really the uh, 10th round. The 11th round, basically it's dead. You're looking at, you know, you're drafting Ritter already. So basically, right. basically the, the, the data is not drastically different. But Baker Mayfield is viewed as a is your last chance to get a starter. Like Ryan Tannehill at this point, people basically would cast him off. Matt Ryan, Davis Mills, holy crap, Malik Willis. Some of these names are bad. Curious though, I want your overall arching takeaways from looking at the data, what you view the community at, and then where you personally stand. So the the last thing I was going to touch on, Adam, before I did it, because people mm-hmm. will throw at, and I've heard this argument, uh, you can chase the draft capital, right? If they were a late round wide receiver, people weren't really drafted in real high. And, and my stance on this is, if the NFL drafts a quarterback high, I am very fucking interested. And I'm telling you that if they draft a wide receiver high, your, your miss rate is probably the same, if not not more than the the equal quarterback, right? The floor is just as bad, if not worse. Yeah, the, the floor is worse. Like Quentin Johnson versus Bryce Young speaks to the floor is worse for the receiver. If you, all but he wouldn't worse. even fall into this. So I'm going to put the cutoff at the top half of the first round. So the first 16 okay. picks. And just look at them historically since we've been done the last 10 years. Where are these wide receivers who went in that and where those quarterbacks were? So 2015, you had a pick 7 that was a whiff, a 14 that was a whiff. Uh, 2016, you had a pick 15 that was was a whiff. Uh, 2017, you had a pick five and a pick nine. There's five guys. Um, 2018, you didn't have a wide receiver drafted that I neither did you have in 19. 2020, you had a pick 12, six dudes. 21, 22, and 20, no wide receivers were drafted. I'll do the same thing for quarterback. Uh, back to your whiffs. 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, Dwayne Haskins. 2020, 2021, 2022, none. And 23, as of now, none. 
Yeah, 23 is, 23 is probably too early to tell for almost either one, right? Like, we, that, we have the, one year sample. That's if you just tra- chase the uh, the draft capital, right? It's a very small percentage of the quarterbacks with good draft capital are going to be the ones that take a shit, right? You already throw out some of the outliers like the Paxton Lynches of the world where it's like, he's picked 26. But I do the same thing to be fair to wide receivers, right? I'm going to throw out the Nikhil Harris of the world at pick 32. The final bow on it for me, at least with this, is, is just over my time, my looking at some of the data that I have, trying to be logical about it, right? There's some people out there who give you awesome spreadsheets, you know, and I love to look at them too and get you the actual data. But my dummy math looking at it is, one, I know quarterbacks hold value. There's insulation. There's only 32 starting spots. And a guy actually being locked in as a starter for the upcoming year means something in Dynasty. Now, beyond this year, if you want to project them out farther, that's probably a bad bet. But at least for rookies, I can tell you that most of them are going to get three years. We just did the the dummy math on it. They're going to get three years. Half of them are going to get four years plus as locked in starters with their team they're going to play out almost their entire rookie contract if not more if the quarterback hits versus the wide receiver the ceiling is incredibly high if they bust the floor is higher than the wide receivers if they bust and even if you follow draft capital the trends still continue top half of the first round versus bottom half of the first round Top to bottom, Adam, the ceilings are higher, the job security, the insulated value is longer than wide receivers. So if I wanted to put it in the context of this class, I think Marv is great. I think Roma Dunze is great. I think Malik Neighbors is great. And they're probably all getting, at worst, right, top 15 draft capital, top 16 draft cap. I really don't think any of them are slipping out of the top 10, but we'll see. If hypothetically this plays out the way it is and we have four quarterbacks inside the top five, let alone the top 10, let alone the top 15, Adam, when you're sitting in your rookie draft, is as much as I love Malik Neighbors and Roma Dunze, right? Like those kind of guys. I'm just telling you historically over the numbers, if you put that aside and just looked at it, there's a real good case that even a J.J. McCarthy, you might go, yeah, I should probably take him over a Roma Dunze. J.J. goes five, Roma Dunze goes nine. It's telling you that the wide receivers bust and just go... Like, get cast-offs a lot quicker, a lot faster in the dynasty community than the quarterbacks ever were. But if J.J. McCarthy were to hit and have a Justin Herbert-like rise and Roma Dunze hits at the same capital, one of them we're talking about in the top three overall picks in the startup draft, and the other one, best-case scenario, you're talking about mid to back-end first round, which makes the quarterback wide receiver rookie discussion in super flex drafts. Like, all this just adds up for me. Like, yes, it doesn't feel great, but when people go, you're fucking crazy, how dare you could take this guy? This is why. <laughs> this is why. Why? Everything I look at tells me, yeah, I'm probably better off, right? Probably better off on the ceiling play, a higher floor. Sounds gross. But that's just that's just the way I'm looking at it. I, I guess for me, um, with especially with the prospects like Rome, when you go to, want to go down the list, like the Brian Thomas Jr. types and the, the different type of holes you could have in the prospect profile, Thomas probably feels a little more in the middle. But like realistically, like the profile of a Zay Flowers, let's use um, like some of those guys last year that ended up hitting. They hit. We mm-hmm. can see where that is now. But I think especially when you're talking neighbors, Rome, if you look at what they're going to do versus J.J. McCarthy and the way the com- like conversation goes with the community, it, J.J. McCarthy, the traits he has, he's going to have to be that Herbert Stroud to catapult himself, I believe, into that higher tier guy. Like Now, I'm not going to say it's impossible. Obviously, we've seen it. J- Drake London is a perfect example who I think is a, um, a guy that has a lot of the higher end traits in the, in the community value. He just, he just wasn't going to fall out of the top four rounds of startup picks. That type of thing. J.J. McCarthy right now, with the draft capital, Mike, may not even go in the first four rounds of startups. Just just think about that for a second right now with where the community is, right or wrong. That's right. where I, I kind of end up tying a lot of the community sediment into it. Like, Drake London basically didn't fall out of round four in startups. And now, with a quarterback, he could go higher. The, I, think the, I think the high-end receiving talents in this class, they're probably going to be really safe bets. If you just talk overall first-round receivers versus first-round quarterbacks, I think the conversation is different there so again when you start throwing in guys in this class that might get first round draft capital Adnai Mitchells um, Troy Franklin's guys that don't have the same pedigree as that really really high talented receiver I think I think those type of floors we could be very much over inflating what their floor really is like uh, Troy Franklin right now like th- those type of characters they have a bad rookie season Mike who's to keep They're them not. from going to Quentin Johnson level I think that part is probably really hard to argue so for me the type of profile that like those three receivers in this class have that's what makes it very different for me is that they're so highly regarded and so talented when you get to i'd probably even say brian thomas jr's uh people can stand for him all they want but he has a lot lower floor i think that that's that's where i think the conversation for me is like mccarthy outside of seven 
just feels crazy if he's a top five quarterback. And you, and you see too, you see it too. A lot of times people are talking about take Bowers ahead of him, take all these guys ahead of him. One of the things too, like we, it's it's hard because we have what we know now versus what we know back then too. But I don't want people to forget where we're at right now with Jason, and I think it's wrong. But where a lot of the community is with him and people telling you to sell and the panic on him, mm-hmm. he was an extremely good prospect. Now we like this because we're in rookie fever and we think about Marv and we think about neighbors and we think about Adunze and we're like, oh, these guys are just different go back and look at like some some data from that time you know whether it's a you know like a prospect grade an analytical grade that kind of stuff on them like and think about how close they are for for example roma roma dunze from barry a shout out to db right barry does his grades he does a film grade but he's mostly analytical stuff and he's got his formula in there roman dunze for 2020 on comes in at the sixth overall wide receiver in barry's grade yeah right which which sounds great right smitty's number one neighbors chase harrison cd lamb roma dunze the guy right after him oh judy okay the guy right after him adam Traylon burks <laughs> like and then go back and maybe look at like maybe lance Zerline's film grades prospect grade of guys who have busted and see how similar their grades were to like maybe where in a dunze or neighbors is right now like separate yourself just a little bit and put yourself in a time machine and go back before we knew that they stunk and they're terrible but think about how they are as prospects coming out and then think about putting yourself in today's position knowing everything that we just laid out here everything that i've been trying to tell you and then compare them to also taking a a jj mccarthy type there's a reason that watson went late there's a reason patrick mahomes went late there's a reason that the dolphins took Tua tunga bailoa over justin herbert even though that was the wrong move there's a reason bryce young went 101 and cj stroud slipped we don't know everything at the time but the data tells me (laughs) the data tells me if i separate myself from the fuck i really love this wide receiver class or these wide receivers are can't miss you know if, if I acknowledge the fact that we make mistakes at times, when I'm sitting in my rookie draft, like the choice is pretty clear for me, even even if people think it's the wrong one. Yeah, actually, I'm willing I, to zig when everybody else is zagging. I, I have I have something I just, it, as you're talking through that, Mike, I, I have a differentiator, I think. I have a pretty What's good that? one. If Marv, Neighbors, and Adunze are top 10, top 12, I think that's where I'll make the distinguishing factor where I believe that the, we're talking about Burks. The NFL did not tell us that they believed high enough on Traylon Burks as maybe we did as a community. And I think that tells says something. Again, with uh, JSN, Mike, nobody, none of us thought JSN was going to fall to 20. We were all pretty shocked that he fell all the way to 20, right? Those guys, if those guys check the boxes and get the top 10 picks like we're thinking top 11 12 those guys of late have not had the value drop off the other ones have so that's something to think about too and i think that goes for that goes for mccarthy as well though mike i I just want everyone to think about that like if mccarthy's a top five pick that says a lot more than if mccarthy's a top 12 or 15 pick even right like where he ends up going draft capital wise i think speaks to his potential insulation i do think though that just the name of mccarthy what we think if mccarthy started slow there's there's something to be said about the community sentiment on him but Rome or I don't think it's gonna happen but if Rome Malik or Marvin Marvin Harrison feels like it's not happening but if any one of those three guys didn't get top 15 draft capital they fell should be having a totally different conversation with the NFL also said something to you too I think that was uh, one thing that as we're going through it I'm like damn I didn't even think about this Traylon was 18 JSN was 20 Chris Olave we hated it at the time Mike right but top 11 pick remember like those, those guys that are getting NFL secured high high end draft capital and the prospect checks the grade I think that's probably one of the more rare that's that's one of the more rare things um i I would just say that would probably be a distincting factor for me not not to say that by the way that they can't like have any fall but like drake london just feels like one of those type of guys garrett wilson you you get that high draft capital with those type of grades and i think you have really good things coming your way as far as floor goes gotcha i I just want to throw this out there stir the pot i mean (laughs) i love he says stir the pot a little bit at the end of the podcast here he's trying to stir the pot and and i understand i'm pretty sure that lance zerline has tweaked his grading system since then just Mm -hmm. a little bit but he's been doing it for a while Corey davis was the number five overall pick in the nfl draft at top five draft cap Mm -hmm. seven years ago zerline gave him a 6.7 grade year one starter roma dunze has the same fucking grade. Corey Davis had, I think, two seasons, one top 24, one top 30. Those first three years, he like kept his value, which was crazy. Wrong, hindsight 2020. But And, and I, I don't think anyone... What does Barry have the grades? I, I, I'd be curious. Is it close? No. He doesn't He doesn't go back to like uh, 2017. Okay. Right. Yeah, he, 2020 is his cutoff. What was the other one I was going to look at as I close that fuck? I'm interested to see what Lance Erline's grade was on Henry Ruggs. I'd be, I'd be interested too. If it's around 6.7, I'll fall out of this fucking chair. That, that'll... That'll speak more to the grading system, hopefully changing, if anything. 6.72.
<laughs> That's awful. I'll tell you this much, Mike. <laughs> Just, listen, people. All right, I'm I'm sorry that it's lighted up this way. Uh, I, I'm not. I'm not. I I think Mike is trying to stir the pot. If you're if you're listening at this point, I hope you are still. Keep going. L- lay into it, man. What? Well, just do your thing. You know, this is your this is your show at this point. I love this. I, I'm just trying to separate myself from hindsight. That's really what it is. Do you believe Do you believe bias is involved in this for you at all? Do you feel like you have an agenda here? If, if, yes, I think I probably do have an agenda, to be completely honest. That's all I'm di- I just wanted to make sure that point was clear. That's all. Yep, yep. Okay. I do have an agenda. Yeah, I, being honest about it. Yeah, that's good. But but it's similar to when we have discourse in the Discord. Bam, um, bam. <laughs> we have discourse in the Discord. Listen, I'm all for, like, healthy discourse. But I'm not for discourse or arguments that aren't backed in or something you can point to that backs up your claim. It's, a, it's the same, like, I can't fucking stay and certain fantasy football podcasts where they just talk just because they have a gut like just go with your gut we're trying to take as many variables out of this whole fucking process as humanly possible and to use everything that we have and some of them we have discovered over the years are worthless combine measurements some of this stuff is just stupid we, we learned with like dk metcalf it doesn't matter what the fuck your three cone was at a wide receiver shit sure. we learned with 40 with like keenan allen and some of these other guys doesn't matter what your 40 was. Amon Ra running a 4.55 at a pro day and getting adjusted to 4.6 or whatever the fuck they did with it. Some of this stuff just really doesn't matter, right? It doesn't factor in, right? Can you play football or can you not? There are some really good indicators out there, right? You have some good metrics, yards per route run, you know, draft capital factors into it. At the end of the day, though, like guys can hit all those metrics and we still find out that landing spot, coaching scheme, what's going on in with, with their life, like what their personal situation is. That stuff can all contribute to whether you're a good fantasy player or not like right. for our team all this stuff like lined up i really want to separate just the hindsight bias of this guy was junk this guy was junk like we knew that we didn't rank him fairly when i put myself and i go and i see lance Zerline as a six seven two grade on henry ruggs who got the nfl draft capital but didn't do much year one still had some value insulation which we covered heading into year two but it wasn't anything like you really want right like if you would have put a quarterback drafted there at 12 and the guy is a starter heading in i think you'd show that very worse i mean i'm not even gonna say very worse because we knew what henry ruggs did did but if they were equal right if the, if the rookie years played out the quarterback was bryce young level and and Henry Ruggs had a bad rookie season at that draft slot. The quarterback is night and day going to be above him. You know, it may only be sixth round to fucking eleventh round. The that's kind of where they're going to end up. Does it make sense to you? Like the I, I, the floor the floor on the quarterback is what I'm getting at is just so much better because of the value insulation. Even even for prospects that we liked at the time, but we don't want to admit it. I I think Mike. I think this is where the the game is also shifting to where. For example, I, I, I can have a, if I drafted one, I may have a starting caliber quarterback that can give me whatever that production means. But I just feel like um, the floor and the flexibility, like we talk about liquidity of draft picks, for, for instance. I don't feel like there's almost anybody, contender or rebuilder, unless they have a, a true personal bias on a receiver that's going to be like, yeah, I don't, I don't, this doesn't, this doesn't make currency to me. It's like, I feel like that currency is about as flexible and fluid as possible. And I think the one year quarterback that, is either on a down season or very split it, it, it makes his his tradeability i think is very different than the receivers i think that's the biggest difference now than it ever once was because i used to be able to and it, i also my what i can do in a trade is different than what i used to be able to three years ago so let me put that on record but my ability to try to trade a guy that's falling it feels like the ceiling's falling the sky's falling on these quarterbacks personally it, it's a lot harder to even get out for firsts anymore not that it's the right play just as far as what i go to the table the negotiation part it's a lot different for me than it is when i bring any of those receivers that weren't completely busting like quentin johnson was that that i think is the biggest difference in today's dynasty game not right not, not saying right or wrong that, that's that's the biggest differentiating factor for me is going to pivot when i'm looking at specific quarterback versus wide receiver prospects in the class now that i'd never used to be this way on i was just going to look at one more thing here adam uh, yeah. henry ruggs rookie year uh 89th wide receiver in fantasy points per game and i told you on keep trade cut he was right around that 30 40 range late 30s early 40 range right we just saw it yep. it was qb 29 and your warp on fade the fetal qb 29 historically is right around 0.6 wide receiver 89 i would i would hope not yeah it doesn't go that far down so i mean you factor in dynasty value 
uh, you can make the argument about whether they're coming up or they're going to be close to equal or, you know, maybe somebody's buying into. But now I add an actual fantasy production for your team and what it means for your league individually. I got to take quarterback almost every time. Give me all the other receivers in the class that weren't Quentin Johnson. Where are they at versus Bryce Young? Not, not, not Quentin Johnson. I was using Henry Ruggs. Because no, 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 I know. I'm saying, I'm talking about this last class, for example. I know you're using Henry Ruggs. I'm yeah, saying, yeah. like, this last year, what are all the other, what are all the other receivers relative to Bryce? Uh, let me look up. Like, give me one. Who do you want? Um, um, Jaden Reed. Yeah, go down. Go go, go, go one it, of the lower ones. Fir- leave it to first round wide okay. receivers. All right, so Jordan look. Addison, Zay Flowers. Sure, yeah. Addison one Flowers. Uh, uh, Addison was wide receiver. He had a and, point nine. He wide receiver thirty historically has a point nine six seven warp. Where was Bryce at? And let's go with uh, you said first rounders. So you, did you say Zay? Yeah, Zay. Let's see where Zay finished couple points tenths of war for me, a first round wide receiver who hit and a first round quarterback who busted i'll say the more and more we've talked about this find myself almost leaning more wide receiver in the pivotal spots unless it's high end draft capital so for example quarterbacks that are in the top 10 probably at that point we're having a totally different combo like if, J- if jj mccarthy any of these quarterbacks in this class they get top 10 draft capital i'm gonna have a hard time saying you should be passing on these guys based on floor um I, I, I'll be, I, this is an interesting one to Paul. I, I actually feel like right now my, my, my stance hasn't really moved because the community sediment, Mike, on receivers has been pushing so strongly the last two years every every time we've gone to fight this whether it's on the high end versus running backs all that happens is the community movement stronger part so of it is me, part of it is that let, for me let me put your feet to the fire then where we're at Let's do it. just what, with what we discussed and i'll use jeremiah's last mock right these are the official spots they're going in the nfl draft just hypothetically now you're on the clock and you're rookie with everything we talked about jj mccarthy goes number four quarterbacks are one two three four off the board vikings trade up to four to get him so that means the arizona cardinals are on the clock with marvin harrison jr staring them in the face and they're like we're gonna take the trade back uh marv goes five mm-hmm. neighbors goes six and roma dunze goes nine yeah i saw this i saw this one um how do you draft them i would put in your rookie draft the seven fir- picks the first seven are going to be only those seven guys for me i would have jj as the seven i would put the receiver still ahead um then i would have the first three quarterbacks definitely like I, here, here's the question for me and this is why i put marv ahead right what do you think when i when i think realistically about the quarterbacks in this class J, Jaden daniels and caleb williams just off of draft i think daniels has the most likely path to that high end upside we're trying to capture the other guys i don't see it where like marv neighbors and adunze i think have the ability to get to 24 value very very safe like they have that they have that top 36 value very insulated in my personal opinion um whereas jj is not even going to be starting out with that i'm taking Jaden. Uh, he would be seventh for me in that scenario and i'll make the case he should be the fourth pick off the you're taking ahead of you're taking ahead of marvin one, harrison jr quarterback should go one two three four well, we uh, we did a exercise that hopefully the audience got something out of because I know neither one of us were going to move based on anything <laughs> we heard here. One, two, three, four, baby. Our in- audience, Holy I hope shit. I hope I hope that you guys got something out of the data that changes or helps you view uh, what you're going to be doing in this pivotal position because right. I don't feel like it's changed anything for me. I I, th- I think that I think the the other the other thing for me that I'll say l- lastly is using t- I like to use historical data especially when looking at production. And I still think, like, even for this concept, it's a good one. But when you start to go, like, what was the value retention of wide receivers drafted 10 years ago? What were the classes? What are people drafting, like, teams drafting receivers at? Like, that conversation just couldn't feel very different than what it is today in the way that these receivers were talking. Maybe it's the class, but there's just an insane number of receivers littered in here that are young, that haven't even necessarily done shit in production. Like, I'm looking at guys, and George Pickens, wide receiver 27. They're, the value retention of guys that don't have to do shit in the NFL is just crazy to me in startups. That's really ultimately what kind of drives a lot of it for me too. It's easy because you you filter out the guys that are like uh, which ones, like you know, like QJ types, QJs, the Jalen Ragers of the world, like dead, gone, forgotten, thrown out the fucking window. They just get cast aside. The bad quarterbacks don't. I don't. I don't have anything left to say. No. All right, let's get the fuck out of here. All right, and. uh Make sure when you're drafting receivers or quarterbacks, when your league mates are playing chess, play 40 chess. Draft them all. One, two, three, four. (laughs) That'll do it. We're out of here. We'll see you back here. Same time, same place next week. It'll be a different time, but it'll be the same place. We're going to do a live stream next week. Special Good Friday edition. Love y'all. We're out of here.